The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Studio 6 Entertainment, Armed Media, or the Entertainment Partners LLC. Enjoy the show. What? Over? Did you say over? Nothing is over till we decide it is. And it ain't over now. Because when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Any questions here? Any questions here? Let's get it on! Initiating satellite scan. Camera deployed. Link established. Satellite coming down in 3, 2, 1. Straight Talk with Matt Hazley. Every Monday and Friday, 9 p.m. Central Time. Only, only on Armed Radio Global. Armed Radio Global. So the attitude is not going to speed things up any bit at all. I'm going to ask you to speak into the mouthpiece very clearly. <laughs> Welcome, boys and girls. It's Friday night, January 15th, halfway through the month of January 2016. Time just rockets by. Um, A lot of things going on. I don't know if people are paying attention in the news. But uh, the Oregon, I mean, the Oregon, uh, we'll get to that later. Uh, Powerball, somebody want it? Not me, otherwise I wouldn't be here right now. But we'll uh, we'll get that second. Uh, special thanks to our sponsors out there, eat24.com. Have you ate yet? Well, log on to eat24.com. Download that app for your favorite mobile device. Click, order, and eat. It's like a food truck in your pants. It's really just that easy. Ask Snoot Dog. Uh, also, St. Julian's Macaroons. Uh, the Price family has been baking these St. Julian's Macaroons since the early 70s. 
uh, with only quality ingredients, 100% gluten-free, FDA-approved. Uh, you can uh, get them shipped right to your door. Check them out, www.macaroons.com. Also, creative-mktg.com. Uh, that's creative marketing for ideas that uh, work, need a lasting impression for next family or business function. Well, log on to creative-mktg, and I'm sure they can help you out. Over 700,000 products. Uh, if you'd like to interact with the show, you can do so multiple ways. You can call in live at 1-866-225-5401. You can tweet me, just hashtag a tweet, arm radio. My tweet deck's up on over here. I'll see it pop up. I uh, I got three screens going, so uh, we can get uh, multiple ways that you can interact. It's, uh, we're talking about uh, the, the intro that I had, and if people don't know what that is, that, that actually is an intro to a video game. But it sounds like uh, what's going on right now, the movie been got uh, 13 hours, which is, uh, it's actually based on the book, based on the real life 2012, September 11th, Benghazi attack. It's based on the actual people that were there that were on the ground and their, uh, you know, what happened to them but what really bothers me is the the movie's just about ready to come out it uh it says well today today's first day friday it says in theaters this friday what today's friday um uh, already the washington post has already put out it might seem impossible but 13 hours is a boring michael bay benghazi movie um i mean they want to downplay this so fast they want to make it, you know, I've seen multiple. I mean, you go look at it right here. CNN says Benghazi movie gets rave reviews. Uh, that's from CNN Money. More people that have talked out and they said how, how unbelievable it is and how heart, you know, gripping it is to sit there and, and see this movie and realize what these guys went through. Well, you know, you, you go back and, you know, we talk about it. People don't remember or they choose to. Okay, hard to believe it's been, you know, over three years, three, you know, working on three and a half years. We lost uh, our first U.S. ambassador since 1979, Chris Stevens. And U.S. Foreign Information Management Officer Sean Smith. We also lost CIA contractors Tyrone Woods and Glenn Doherty. They were ones who went and disregarded to stand down. But this is a, a report that came out. And this was on Breitbart. Uh, Atkinson. Overwhelming body of evidence, Benghazi rescue teams turned back. It says Wednesday on Newsmax TV, the Steve Mal Malsberg show, while discussing her Benghazi investigation full measure, host Cheryl Atkinson said there is now overwhelming evidence that rescue teams sent to aid U.S. consulate in Benghazi on September 11, 2012, had been turned back before arriving. I was listening to him talk about it. Today, they said a jet can get there in 50 minutes. This battle went on for seven hours. Or actually, right here in the here, it says eight hours. They could have flown there and back four times. And they said they they had a drone flying overhead. If they can get a drone to fly overhead in time to watch it in real time, why they wouldn't send people to help them? Atkinson says, we also spoke to sources and had some email evidence that talks about special forces 
that were not far away in Europe and were told were assigned to respond in an event of a case just like this. And yet they were turned back according to witnesses. This is something that the president, the White House, had steadfastly denied. But there's now what I would call an overwhelming body of evidence that would lead us to believe that somebody stopped a number of teams and potential rescuers from entering Libya and going on to Benghazi to help those attacks that were underway. They could have gotten there according to experts and people that have information we spoke to. They could have gotten there before the last two Americans died. Those attacks went on for eight hours. Uh, she added, we spoke to, again, CIA expert, team, uh, team leader expert, an anti-terrorism expert who says only person who stops those forces that spun up automatically without waiting to be told the only force is the commander-in-chief slash the White House, an authority that comes from within. So, I mean, that's pretty pretty high, I guess it would be, I wouldn't say charges, but it would be accusations. You know, you look at, the timing of it. It was right before the last election. So nobody wanted anything to make it look bad. I, uh, they've been stonewalling this, this, uh, thing forever. You know, they don't want to sit there and come out with anything. Well, this movie does is not going to look good for. I mean, it's going to be. It's going to be a year. We got. I mean, we just start off the caucuses. Iowa, February first, they vote for their candidate for president. So, I mean, it's going to be a year from almost a year from now, before we go for an election. So, you know, this movie will be. Yeah, it'll be. In the, the hands of, you know, in the minds of Iowa, Iowans, it'll be um, fresh. But when you get towards, you know, 10 months down the road or, you know, 11 months down the road, you know, you know Super Tuesday, whatever, they, uh, what, November first weekend or first Tuesday in November, when, they, you, you know, you vote for president, it, you know, a lot of people forget things. And what amazing is... That I hear people all the time is, you know, you say, well, you know, this person lied. Oh, well, they all lie. Well, then why vote for these people? You know, if they all lie, then vote somebody in that doesn't. You know, think about it. Let's make a change. You know, let's let's do is do something better for our country. Instead of vote, why, why elect a guy that you, you know, why don't you just base it on how he looks then? You know why? Why vote for somebody that you know is gonna has been lying to you? I mean, it makes no sense at all. I mean, you know, with with all that has gone on in Benghazi, and you know, um, I mean, I, I find it very hard to believe that anybody can think that uh, that Hillary is telling the truth. Um. You know, to sit there and come out with evidence saying they turn them around. You know, that really worries me. What's gonna, what else is going to happen? What else is happening in our society that we don't know about? Um, we, uh, I mean, I have, I got a bunch of stories here, but, oh, let's see here. want to do is get into the story where they talk about um oh here here you go but this is a um let me see here oh here we go here, here's the gentleman that said hillary blamed him for benghazi so and i want to do is uh we're going to get into hillary's emails here shortly but uh 
had another dump for that. But uh, it says, uh, this is a story out. It says, Hillary blamed me for Benghazi. So that's weird. The wild tale of the porn director, the evangelical Christians, and the criminal huckster who made the infamous Prophet Muhammad YouTube film that Clinton blamed for Benghazi. For those who like shock and awe and explosions, this weekend brings, you know, they're talking about 13 hours uh, with 2012 attacks. It says, this may be Hollywood's big, first big film about the bloodshed, but there's another movie that lies at the center of the tragic events of September 11th. They're talking about the YouTube short variously called Innocence of Bin Laden, Desert Warrior, First Terrorist, Innocence of Muslims, and the iteration that was blamed for setting off riots around the globe. A uh, Muhammad movie trailer that one portrayed the prophet as a sodomizing, womanizing pedophile. The one that Hillary Clinton was talking about when, according to the father of Benghazi victim, she promised we we're going to have the filmmaker arrested who is responsible for the death of your son. It was quite a claim for a movie director directed by a porn veteran produced by a convicted huckster led by actors who claim to be duped into roles and promoted by a collection of anti-Islamic hate mongers who almost comically crackpot preachers. So, you know, they're going through that the, Hillary was blaming this. This comes off the Daily Beast. This guy for causing the Benghazi attack. So you look at the media wants to cover for her. You know, they, they, they talked about, oh, well, she went up in front of the, you know, Congress and testified for 11 hours or whatever. Yeah, put, put yourself over in Benghazi fighting people, fighting for your life for eight hours. And what did she do the night of Benghazi? She can't remember. She can't remember what was going on that night. She's probably sleeping. She could care less. You know, you, you think about those people fighting for eight hours for life. Ambassador Chris Stevens in a locked room. He dies of smoke inhalation. And then she comes out and says, why do we care? It's been so long ago. Yeah, because she didn't care. She didn't care less about him. It was the day before. She's got the family who is pushing back now. It says, um, let me see if I can find the article here. I got them all in, in. Oh, here you go. This is the one where the Benghazi family has come out off of Breitbart. After screening the new movie, 13 Hours, uh, the family of Benghazi, dead, described the film as a powerful experience that was sometimes difficult for them to watch. They stood by their account of then Secretary of State Hillary, Hillary, Hillary Clinton blaming a YouTube video for the attack at the memorial service for their loved ones and promising to take down the person who made the video. So they're not happy about Clinton calling them liars, especially Sean Smith's mother, Pat, who tearfully told Fox News she couldn't handle seeing her son's death represented on screen and sobbed, Hillary's a liar? I know what she told me. When host Megyn Kelly repeated Clinton's accusation that the Benghazi families were somehow confused about the fog of war and misunderstood what she was telling them, Smith replied, bull feathers, that's just plain old bull. I know what she said, and I'm not only did she say it, but Obama said the same thing to me and Panetta and Biden and Susan Rice. I went out all of them, or she said she went up to all of them, begging them to tell me what happened. And they all said it was the video, every one of them. Later in the interview, Smith said she, uh, she wanted to see Hillary in jail for her misconduct. She's been lying. She turned the whole country into a bunch of liars, she declared. And then it says uh, Charles Woods described the Benghazi families as honorable people and said he did not want to politicize the death of his son, Ty. 
as he felt it would dishonor his son's memory. But he brought back his 2012 notebook with him in the interview and read from it. The entry where he described giving Clinton a hug and a handshake at the memorial event at the wish she promised to have the filmmaker arrested responsible for the death of her son. Woods also defended the honor of the men who fought on the ground in Benghazi. They risked their lives because of integrity, because of honor. They don't lie. They have no motivation to lie. As Kelly points out, the film is renewing controversy over stand-down orders, an issue Obama and Clinton supporters uh, hope to have put to bed. Uh, there are still witnesses who insist assets could have been uh, made a difference in the battle and were told to stand down, while others insist no such order was given and no effective force could have made it to the scene of the attack in time. Well, how do you know? You send them there anyway. If they get there after it's over, they get there after it's over. But you send them there anyway. It's like these um, these sailors. These sailors over in Iran who got arrested or taken uh, into custody. They were taken into custody after we told Iran that we were searching for them because something happened with their boat and they were lost. And then we apologize. And I heard him apologize. You heard him tell the soldier, the sailor, to apologize. And you could tell it was a chorus apology. And they said, uh, We're not apologizing. And you, I mean, it's like. Nobody is on par with each other. One person says one thing, the other person says another thing. And it's it's like who's talking, you know? Uh, I mean, it's it's you know, it's crazy to listen to them. So, I hope someday we get to the bottom of the Benghazi story. I'm hoping they find a smoking gun uh, email or smoking gun audio tape of. Hillary telling these people because it needs to come out. They flat lied, so they could, wouldn't it? It would not affect the the outcome of the election. They were so afraid of it causing problem with the election. I don't think he would. I don't think it would have made a difference anyway. I think if he would have come out flat out and said, "Yeah, we screwed up. We should have sent people," then they would have went, you know, hey. I'd rather have you tell me the truth than sit there and, you know, lie and say it was over a over a YouTube video. Because I mean, that from the get go, people thought that was BS. You know, it's. I've always thought that was BS from the get go. I just I think it's so sad that these people died. Because. Nobody wanted to do is help them. They wanted to do is make sure that somebody got reelected. You know, you, you uh, Hillary's got more baggage going on. Right now, I think she, uh, oh, what was it? Uh, oh, this is, this is from InfoWars. InfoWars, it has, uh, this is, uh, oh, yeah, here in Iowa. Trump will be able, uh, or actually Iowans will be able to see 13 hours, the movie, for free, thanks to Donald Trump. Trump has rented a screen at uh, at Carmike Cobblestone 9 Theater in Urbandale to show the film. Uh, Mr. Trump would like all Americans to know the truth about what happened in Benghazi. The GOP presidential candidate, Iowa's co-chair Tana Gertz, told, or, uh, said Thursday night, so um I'd like to have him do it here locally. I should do his I got Hope's Hope's number. I should do his ask her if she can show it here. I'll stand there and hand out the free tickets. It's um uh, you know, you, you look at 
what's going to happen? Is it going to come out and affect her? I don't know how she can waltz around everything that's been going on. And they these people sit there and think that she's for women's rights. You know, for all the stuff that her husband did, and they think she's for women's rights. He was more of a a, a woman abuser. And she sat there and hid it. I'd more respect for her if she did it up and left him. But she did. So you look at this. Uh, I think it's kind of neat that uh, Donald Trump is renting out theaters. I'd like to see him rent out some more. If I do is uh, get some word to him, have him rent one out here locally. I, I talk to a lot of people that, you know, they tell me that, oh, if Donald Trump wins, I'm going to do his move to, uh, you know, Canada, or I'm going to move out of this country, or move to a different plant. I'm like, I, I don't understand why. And, my, and I talk to people that think he's a, oh, he's a racist. And I'm like, what, what do you call him being a racist for? Oh, he didn't want to allow Muslims into this country. Uh, it's not that he didn't want to allow Muslims in this country. He didn't want to allow uh radical Muslims into this country, they're going to do harm to this country. He doesn't want people coming in from Mexico that are criminals. I don't mind immigration. I think it's great. We're, most everybody here is an immigrant of one type or another. I mean, I have some Indian blood in me, but I don't have, you know, I'm not a full-blooded Indian, so it, somehow I was an immigrant sometime way back. So You know, most everybody's an immigrant here. So I believe in immigration, but I believe in the right way of immigration. And I believe that people that have been here for a long period of time that are here illegally should have some time, of, you know, if they're working and doing something, they need to do is start paying their share of taxes and stuff. And as they do that, then, you know, they should have a path to citizenship, which, but the ones that are over here causing crime that you kick them out and they come right back and you kick them out and, you know, and you're going to let them back out on the street? I don't think that's right. Send them back. We need to do is protect our borders. If we get Syrian refugees coming in through the border, um, we're in trouble. You know, you look at it. We have to do is make sure that our uh, that our borders are secure. So we don't get a tax on our on our people. You look what's going on over in Europe right now. They, they got a picture. I watched. I saw it on Facebook the other day. Pamela Geller point, points out a lot of the stuff that's been going on, because nobody wants to report on it. They showed this woman who they uh, she resisted raping, and they kicked and crushed her cheekbone, broke her face because she resisted. In Norway, immigrants raped a four-year-old boy. Four. What's wrong with this? And people choose to ignore this. That's what I, I'm just like flabbergasted that the liberals want to sit there and go, oh, let them all come on in. No, we don't need to do his background check. Them. It's great. They're just going to be great. And and they what they stand for, these hardcore Sharia Radical Muslims, which there's going to be a percentage of them, no matter what, you're going to have it. There's no way to vet them, but these people that coming in, that are these hardcore Sharia law Muslims, are going to hate everything they stand for. They hate homosexuals. They hate the way women dress. They hate every woman's right. They feel that you should be wearing a, a. A burqa, or whatever you want to call it, you know, that covers you from head to toe. All you see is your eyes. I mean, what's wrong with this? What? What? How come they don't see that as something that's going to be against what they, you know, the values of what they think about? They're going to. What? What's the problem is? Is 
they go up to a somebody that's gay, and they throw them off a building. They don't care. I just saw a picture tonight. This they took this and sliced this person's hands. It looked like it was a I don't know what kind of slicer for got caught reading the Bible, not the Quran. They got caught reading the Bible, so they were since they were reading the Bible, they were punished. There's no. Um, okay, well, it's that was naughty. Don't do that. They do is they punish you by whipping you in the street or caning you in the street, and you know you get caught robbing a place. They cut off your hand. It's a little different. They get you get caught believing against the Quran or saying anything. They kill you. So, what we want to do is let people into this country that is going to assimilate with our, our, I would say, our culture or our lifestyle. Being able to do is deal with all the, you know, you know, the freedom of religion, freedom of speech. For, you know, if they want to do that. It's fine. But if they want to sit there and and uh, take somebody that gay and want to throw them off a building or take somebody that wants to read the Bible and mutilate them or genital mutilation, I don't want to get into that, or rape women because they think that they can treat them as dogs, I, there, there's something wrong with that. I don't understand how you think that's okay to go, oh, yeah, just let them in. Yeah, that's great. I said, there's got to be something wrong with, you know, that you got to stand up. You know, Donald Trump has got so much crap for telling them that it would be a temporary ban on Muslims coming into this country until they improve the vetting process. Not permanent. There was a, oh, what was his name? He was a, Oh, he's a billionaire over in, oh, I can't think of, he was talking about if Donald Trump gets elected, I'm going to do is pull all my money out of the United States. Well, good. Pull it out. Yeah. And you realize how much money you're going to lose. You know, I just think it's ridiculous when you sit there and they, they want to do strong arm us to tell us what we need to do and what we should do. Screw it. You don't want to have your money in this country? Get it out. It will, uh, somebody will invest in your place. We weren't so, uh, dependent on foreign money. We'd be, I think we'd be doing better off anyway. You look at what's going on in China. I mean, you're talking about the president, State of Union. Oh, the economy's great. Oh, anybody tells you that the economy's bad, they're they got to be lying. They're they're telling you a bunch of bull. What are you talking about? You look at the. It's dropped almost what, a thousand over a thousand points in a week in a week and a half maybe. Tell that to, Walmart. Tell that to all the people. Oh, the economy's doing just great. We're going to talk about that when we get back. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to talk about Walmart right when we get back. Need a dose of Raw Reality Radio? Listen in to Night Talk with Joe Rocks every Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern. Exclusively on Armed Radio Global. With audio replays on Spreaker and live feed video on Ustream.tv. Or call in live to Night Talk with Joe Rocks at 1-866-225-5401. Thursdays, 10 p.m. Eastern. Hey there, sexy. This is comedian Jenny Lavoie. You can catch me with the rest of the gang every Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern on Night Talk with Joe Ross, exclusively on Armed Radio Global. Mwah! Mom, can you bag me some cookies for school today? Finally. As a mother, I want to share about St. Julian's macaroons. I am concerned about my child's health. 
So I pack for his lunchbox, and after school, I give him St. Julian's macaroons as a healthy alternative to many of the store bought cookies. There are no preservatives, and only 100 calories. And he really likes them. So find them in the freezer section at your local supermarket, or order online today at www.macaroons.com. Route 106 Motors is the home of fine pre-owned vehicles. Experience a no-pressure sale with a family-friendly atmosphere. Route 106 Motors has been practicing the same simple philosophy of low prices for over a decade, and it has brought us great success. Recently, while other dealers are closing their doors, Route 106 Motors is expanding. We are a wholesale dealer, and we own the property and pay cash for all the vehicles. This allows us to sell to the consumer for a lot less than the average dealership. We are a high-volume, small-profit dealer, and we pass the savings on to you. New changes have been made at Route 106 Motors. Stop by and check out our brand-new building. Route 106 Motors, located at 569 West Street. Check our website at Route106Motors.com and be sure to like us on Facebook to find out about all the latest deals and savings opportunities. Route106Motors.com Hey everyone, this is Monica Ursino. Be sure to check out my music on WARM, Boston's digital dance station. And you can catch me on Night Talk with Joe Rock Thursdays at 10 p.m. Eastern exclusively on Armed Radio Globe. Are you hangry? Know the signs. Uncontrollable yelling. Why aren't you egg rolls? Hallucinations. Sushi. Pants discomfort. I hate you, pants. Hangry. It can happen to anyone. Fortunately, there's E24, the app that tells hunger to shut up. Egg rolls. Thanks, Snoop. E24. In my medical opinion, it's the best mother way to order food online, baby. Hey everybody, Mike Allen here. You can hear me live every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on TuneIn Radio. Or you can visit my website at www.ontheairwithmikeallen.com for more show times, updates, and replays. So remember, every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, on the air with Mike Allen, right here on Armed Radio Global. Hey everybody, this is Paul and Jim. Join us on Pod Talk Radio, Thursday nights, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right after Night Talk with Joe Rocks. Where we will be discussing subjects one doesn't say in polite society. We're rude and crude and unwavering our opinions. So please tune in to Armed Radio Global, home of the big guns. Boom! Boom. And we're back. Uh, yeah, we were going to talk about Walmart. Walmart to fire 16,000. That's 16,000. 16,000. And it's going to close 269 stores globally. Oh, and it said this time around, the plumbing was not cited as a factor. It said the last 12 months have been not kind to Walmart. This come out of InfoWars. I, I, you can just about any major news site, you're going to find one of these about Walmart. When, Wal, uh, when the world's largest retailer bowed to pressure to raise wages for its lowest paid employees, the living wage crowd cheered. In short order, it became apparent that the uh, reverberations from the $1.5 billion endeavor would spell trouble for the company. When a series of ill-fitted efforts to squeeze the supply chain failed to plug the gap, the company re uh, resorted to store closures and uh, or reduced hours. Finally, in October, Walmart threw in the towel and cut guidance. Its shares plunged. Now we learn the retailer is set to closing nearly 300 stores, affecting some 16,000 employees worldwide. It says... Uh, Walmart stores 
announced, you know, it planned to close uh, October t- 2015. The company said the active renewal of the portfolio was underway to ensure assets were aligned with strategy. Today's action follows a thorough review of Walmart's nearly 11,600 worldwide stores that took into account the numbers of factors, including financial performance, as well as strategic alignment with long-term plans. And a total of the impacted stores represent less than 1% of the global square footage and revenue. Actively managing our portfolio of assets is essential in maintaining a healthy business, said Doug McMillan, present CEO of Walmart Stores. Closing stores is never an easy decision, but it's necessary to keep the str- company strong, and position for the future. It's important to remember we'll be open. Uh, we'll open more than 300 stores around the world next year. So we are committed to growing, but we are being disciplined about it. So they're going to close, th- open 300 and close 269. Uh, what? It says, uh, as part of today's action, the company will close 150 store, fifth 154. In the U.S., including the company's 102 smallest format stores, like Walmart Express, which have been in pilot since 2011. Walmart instead will focus on strengthening super centers, optimizing neighborhood markets, growing the e-commerce business, and expanding pickup services for customers. Also covered in the closures are 23 neighborhood markets, 12 super centers, Seven stores in Puerto Rico, six discount centers, and four Sam's Clubs. I wonder when they're going to do is uh, put the stores up there to close. International, the company is following a disciplined strategy, actively managing its portfolio. Consistent with the strategy, the company is closing 115 stores outside the United States. This includes 60 recently closed loss-making stores in Brazil which represents only 5% of sales of the market. The company has already been able to recloat many affected associates in Brazil to other stores. The remaining 55 stores are primarily lost, making stores in other Latin American markets. Walmart would disclose more detail about those actions, including the number of stores per market and competing local associate and community outreach. So you look at when they're going to do it is... Um, what stores, it says the list of stores that will be closing will be available today on the company's website at approximately 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. So let's go to, I'm going to open up Walmart.com while we're there so we can find out if it's going to do is, uh, let's see here. Oh, let me see. We can go for, uh, I wonder if it would be under corporate. I don't think it's going to have a big on thing what stores are going to be closing. Or maybe don't return stuff here. (laughs) So, I got Walmart corporate. Nope, doesn't say anything. Newsroom. Maybe it's, well, that's a video. I don't want to watch a video. All I have to do is find out. I have to do is get a list, talk about that next, maybe next Monday or something like that, talk about what stores are actually closing to find out where, what state. Um, but, I, hey, they'll have stuff on uh, Blue Light Special. Oh, that's Kmart. I'm sorry. They already did that special. <laughs> that, that one already went under. Uh, Walmart has the oh, rollback. That's what it is. But, yeah, so that tells me uh, the president come out and said, oh, anybody tells you the economy is doing terrible, they're just giving you a load of BS. Well, apparently that's not a load of BS if you work at Walmart. Uh, here, here's a story that came out, and I was going to talk about this. This is an ex-Secret Service agent. I, was, I forgot to talk about this when we were talking about Hillary. Is an ex-Secret Service agent, uh, he actually ran for Congress, He said Hillary Clinton continued using her private email to discuss classified information despite knowing her server had been hacked. This is a former Secret Service agent who was on the Alex Jones show 
Thursday. Dan Bongino, a 12-year veteran of the agency who served under Presidents Bush and Obama, stated that during a nearly hour-long interview that the high-level source had revealed that the former Secretary of State knowingly exposed national secrets. He says, a source fed to me, and by the way, uh, Alex, an un unimpeachable source by any measure, this is unimpeachable source who said not only was the email server hacked, which is breaking news, but not only was it hacked, Alex, but the Clintons knew it was hacked, and they kept using it, he said. Bongino, who published the account in his latest book, The Fight of Secret Service Agents Inside Account of the Security Failings in the Political Machine, said sub subsequent investigation into the claim backed up the source statement. You have a woman running for president of the United States who's traded our deepest national security secrets over a private server she knew wasn't secure and that nefarious actors were looking at the emails and she did it anyway, he said. When I heard the story, I couldn't believe it. I had to make sure I did a double and triple check to be sure because I just don't write stuff in my book otherwise, this Bongino said. According to congressional investigators, Clinton private server was repeatedly hit by hack attempts in 2014 that originated from multiple countries, including China, South Korea, and Germany. A February 2011 memo sent to Clinton also warned of a dramatic increase in attempts by, and it's redacted, to compromise the private home email accounts of senior State Department officials. Several national security experts have concluded that Clinton server almost certainly lacked the security measures to keep out a determined nation state or actor as well. If all that she was had was standard technology, it would be merely a speed bump for a sophisticated adversary to gain access to everything there. Richard C. Schaefer Jr., former director of information and assurance at the National Security Agency, told the Washington Post, on a target scale of 1 to 10, she's a 10. When you think of treaties, trade negotiations, anything that the Secretary of State would be involved in, she would be incredibly lucrative, lucrative target, maybe even more so than the President. The latest revelation in email scandals suggests that Clinton even instructed an aide to remove classification markings, having them sent in an insecure fashion. So this is gigantic, said former Federal Prosecutor Joseph D. Genova. She caused to be removed a uh, she caused to be removed a classified marking and then had it transmitted in an unencrypted manner. That is a felony. The removal of the classified marking is a federal crime. It is the same thing to do, same thing to order someone to do it, as if she did had it done herself. The FBI is currently investigating possible public corruption violations and whether or not Clinton's server was breached during the time at the U.S. Department of State. Wow. If that is the case, how the FBI doesn't stand, walk in there and you have to do is do something. If she knowingly did this, she thinks that no one is going to touch her for, you know, I, they want to do is, I just don't know how you can sit there and look at this candidate and sit there and consider a candidate. She's starting to fall in the polls and now they're dropping more email bombs. Those are coming out daily. Uh, they finally just came out with some more that were just out released today. Um, so what are they going to do? When, when is this going to finally this investi investigation is going to be done? You know, it, it, it's got to here, here's, here's the email or the report it says State Department suddenly discovers thousands more Clinton documents Watchdog Judicial uh, Watchdog Group Judicial Watch 
has been trying to squeeze Hillary Clinton's documents out of the State Department with Freedom of Information Act requests for years. FOIA requests have been a way of turning the FOIA lawsuits before any wing of the Obama administration responds to them. It said last Friday, three years after one suit was filed, the State Department suddenly discovered thousands of previously undisclosed Clinton documents. This latest fight of Clinton records at this late date is astonishing. Judicial Watch President Tom Fitton declared the State Department waited to the last possible moment as it did with Clinton even to tell Judicial Watch and the federal courts about the thousands of records that haven't been searched, as the law requires. Who knew what and when did they know it about these Clinton documents? Fitton also thinks the new documents included some significant information. These newly recovered Clinton records are potential game changer and will be of interest as the courts, Congress, and the FBI criminal investigation, he said. It sure looks like more of the same in terms of the Obama administration officials obstructing our FOIA requests, obstructing the courts, obstructing Congress, and obstructing justice. You know, I don't think right now with our DOJ will do anything to Hillary Clinton or the Biden administration. I don't care if they had smoking gun video telling them that they that they did everything that they think that they did. They won't they won't prosecute. And what's sad. And she could still run for president, which she shouldn't even be authorized to run for president because any violation of what she's done makes her un or uh, uneligible for running for any office. So, I mean, it's scary to think what they just will overlook. And the average American, I mean, look at General Petraeus. He loses a star. He did time, got sent or uh, got a $100,000 fine. And she gets nothing right now. I mean, nothing. He had a document in his desk looked a little suspicious. I think they just did that to shut him up. So, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what goes on with this. I mean, there's so much smoke and nobody, nobody, you know, if you sit there and still want to vote for her after the, all the stuff that goes on, you just got to be plain stupid. You know, to think that this lady is, is uh, legit. She freaking lied to the public. She lied to the, uh, these families of these people of Benghazi. She didn't care. All she cares about is herself. And you think she's going to stand up and fight for your family? I don't care. Go out and vote. But I, I tell you what, make sure that you research the candidate you're going to vote for. Don't just vote because some guy said, yeah, yeah, this person's good. I mean, if you, if you uh, really think Trump is the way, then that's what you vote for. But if you think that, uh, if you like Bernie Sanders, I know people that are going to vote for Bernie Sanders. But, you know, as being a socialist, you realize you vote him in, that he wants to do is take more of your money to make all of you equal. So if you, you're successful and you make more than some other people, well, he wants to take some of that money that you made and give it to somebody that didn't make it. That's what a socialist is. Socialist is great until you run out of other people's money. Yeah, socialism is... You look at all these countries where they're running from. They're running from and fleeing from socialistic countries. You know, it's great. Having all that extra money is nice. Until it runs out. I mean, right now they're taking in more taxes than ever, and they still can't. They still don't have enough to run what they have. You look at right now, the president's wife has forty some aides. What the heck does she need that many aides for? What's going on there? I heard that story and I was like, what the? We'll talk about that when we get back. We're, uh, but right before we go, uh, 
Latest news in the Oregon militia standoff. Man arrested uh, for driving a stolen government vehicle. I don't know where that said. Uh, standoff with armed militia in Oregon escalated on Friday after police swooped in on one of the protesters to make the first arrest in connection with the two-week occupation of the Federal Wildlife Refuge. Um, apparently, Mike Allen has been in trading arguments with uh, uh, his... Let me see his... Uh, I got him on... I'm in, I've been getting the tweets. His name is... Let's see here. I gotta find it. Something real bra or something like that. Real bro. I'm not sure what. It, and, and he's accusing Mike of being a racist. And and I mean, from what I know, Mike, I don't think you know, Mike's not a racist. But because he, the guy, made a statement that uh, if they would have been uh, black at the Oregon standoff, the Government would have came in and shot him. Well, you tell that to David Koresh. Yeah. You know, I don't see any of the people that were the protesters were in Ferguson or Baltimore or in the Ball America or in Chicago were shot. So, do I think that there's a problem with uh, some law enforcement? Of course. There's, there's always going to be. Any field. You're always going to have good, bad people. Whatever field it is. Do I think that they need to go in there and guns ablaze? <laughs> there's nobody there. It's a wildlife refuge that people would go run out, so nobody's using it. Try to get this thing to dissolve without having to be uh, a firefight about it and solve it peacefully. And then if you have to, then you go in and arrest them later. I mean, if these people, if, uh, If a protesting group for Black Lives Matter took over a wildlife refuge out in the middle of nowhere where nobody was at, and they said, we're taking this over, we're staying here, um, I think they would just let them stay there until they finally got, <laughs> you just don't give them food, you know? Don't let them have people go and bring them food. So, yeah, I mean, what, it, whoever it is, just let them wean themselves out. You know, they're... Sooner or later, they're going to go, oh, well, you know, hey, this is time to go. <laughs> do I think this is the proper way to do it? No, I think you need to go through the channels. I think you need to go through, I don't know. I mean, maybe they have tried to go through, and, and I'm not just, but, you know, you, you look at, uh, you know, I talk, hear people talking about they, they would approve of uh, military force going in there and taking them out. I'm like, who are they hurting? What you know? I mean, it's not like somebody rented the thing out and say, mm, "We got a wedding there next Saturday." You know. Um, so it said, "Oh, but for the arrest, I said uh, it said Kenneth Meet Medenbach." who was arrested for unauthorized use of a government vehicle, is a chainsaw sculptor and longtime nemesis of the government with long history of premises entanglements with the courts over occupation on federal lands. He is the first militiaman connected with the armed occupation to be arrested since the bird sanctuary in rural Oregon was unexpectedly taken over on January 2nd. Medbox 62 was detained outside a Safeway supermarket in Burns, Oregon, some 30 miles from Malhauer National Refuge or Wildlife Ridge, according to a statement from the Harney County Sheriff's Office. He appears to have been driving, uh, driven from the occupied compound to a local supermarket in a vehicle allegedly stolen from the Fish and Wildlife Re 
wildlife service would run the refuge. The sheriff's office statement said the law enforcement officer recovered the two vehicles stolen from the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge. So, took him in. He got arrested for, and he'll probably get charged with part of the, um, you know, with, you know, taking over the, the property. I'm sure there'll be some type of federal charge. But it said, uh, it says Medebach, who was tried and convicted of the same crime in 1996, according to a Forest Service officer who testified that at the trial, Medebach was living in an 8 by 10 foot tent with a metal flue and a wood burning stove and near, nearby campfire and various cooking and sleeping equipment. According to the court memorandum, the magistrate said that Medebach posed a risk to public safety and said he had referenced Ruby Ridge and Waco, two sieges that ended in violence at a detention hearing. The government said Menabach had tried to protect his campfire with 50 to 100 pounds of explosive ammonium sulfate and a pellet gun, which appeared to be a hand grenade with trip wires. So he was convicted, given a six month sentence. Menabach appealed the case. Federal Ninth Circuit Court, who argued the federal ownership of unappropriated public lands, was unconstitutional. He also filed a civil suit under demand that federal judges no longer swear an oath or affirmation of the Constitution, a position he defended the blog post on January 2015. So, you know, they, uh, I guess they were using the vehicles to go, probably to go get food. How stupid is that? Taking the vehicle that's for the wildlife refuge. I mean, sure, they're going to arrest you. But they didn't think this thing out before they did it. <laughs> so we're going to take another quick break. We'll be back here shortly. Yep, so you use the right mouse. Need a dose of Raw Reality Radio? Listen in to Night Talk with Joe Rocks every Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern. Exclusively on Armed Radio Global. With audio replays on Spreaker and live feed video on Ustream.tv. Or call in live to Night Talk with Joe Rocks at 1-866-225-5401. Thursdays, 10 p.m. Eastern. Hey there, sexy. This is comedian Jenny Lavoie. You can catch me with the rest of the gang every Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern on Night Talk with Joe Rocks, exclusively on Armed Radio Global. Mwah! Mom, can you bag me some cookies for school today? Finally. As a mother, I want to share about St. Julian's macaroons. I am concerned about my child's health, so I pack for his lunchbox, and after school, I give him St. Julian's macaroons as a healthy so many of us are about cookies. There are no preservatives and only 100 calories. And we really like them. So find them in the freezer section at your local supermarket or order online today at www.macaroons.com. Route 106 Motors is the home of fine pre-owned vehicles. Experience a no-pressure sale with a family-friendly atmosphere. Route 106 Motors has been practicing the same simple philosophy of low prices for over a decade, and it has brought us great success. Recently, while other dealers are closing their doors, Route 106 Motors is expanding. We are a wholesale dealer, and we own the property and pay cash for all the vehicles. This allows us to sell to the consumer for a lot less than the average dealership. We are a high-volume, small-profit dealer, and we pass the savings on to you. New changes have been made at Route 106 Motors. Stop by and check out our brand new building. Route 106 Motors, located at 569 West Street. Check our website at Route106Motors.com and be sure to like us on Facebook to find out about all the latest deals and savings opportunities. Route106Motors.com Hey everyone, this is Monica Ursino. Be sure to check out my music on WARM. Boston Digital Dance Station, and you can catch me on Night Talk with Joe Rock Thursdays at 10 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on Armed Radio Globe. Are you hangry? Know the signs. 
uncontrollable yelling. Why aren't you egg rolls? Hallucination. Sushi. Pants discomfort. I hate you, pants. Hangry. It can happen to anyone. Fortunately, there's E24, the app that tells hunger to shut up. Egg rolls. Thanks, Snoop. E24. In my medical opinion, it's the best mother way to order food online, baby. Hey everybody, Mike Allen here. You can hear me live every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on TuneIn Radio. Or you can visit my website at www.ontheairwithmikeallen.com for more show times, updates, and replays. So remember, every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, on the air with Mike Allen, right here on Armed Radio Global. Hey everybody, this is Paul and Jim. Join us on Pod Talk Radio, Thursday nights, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right after Night Talk with Joe Rocks. Where we will be discussing subjects one doesn't say in polite society. We're rude and crude and unwavering our opinion. So please tune in to Armed Radio Global, home of the big guns. Talking about big guy, or not big guy. We're talking about the room, sorry, Oregon, Oregon militia standoff. Well, apparently through miscommunication that was going on, uh, FBI agents weren't posing as militia. Ex fire chief clarifies uh, miscommunication whips up worries about infiltration. This uh, was out. U.S. News came out, alleged that undercover FBI agents were caught posing as militia members in southeast Oregon splashed around the internet this week but stories purported source says he made no such claim uh, Chris Bryles who recently resigned his position as Harney County Fire Chief says Nevada Assemblywoman Michelle Fiore whose Wednesday press release sparked concern about a throwback to FBI infiltration and dirty tricks against activists must have misunderstood him Fiori released Bryle's statement had determined men posing as militia were the FBI. Bryles tells U.S. News he did not indeed catch undercover FBI agents in small town Burns. Now where um, armed protesters are occupying a federal wildlife refuge, but they were not posing as militia. Uh, they were posing as anything other than dishonest people, he says. They were perceived as militia by the locals but they weren't posing out there with a shirt that said I, I I'm militia. The refuge takeover that began on January 2nd has strained Barl's friendship in small town Burns prompting him to keep an eye out for trouble. He serves on a committee set up by activists and a friend suggested he investigate strangers assumed to be militiamen near a, a vacant National Guard armory. Said the people found out, found that the armory drove off in three vehicles, one of which followed to a nearby McDonald's. Two men in the black SUV identified themselves as businessmen named Chuck and Mike, who were looking to open up a shop in town. Uh, an explanation, Browls, who refused to accept. Browls called the local authorities, who said uh, later to the scene, a sheriff's deputy, he says he took a phone call and later. Explained that the men were undercover FBI agents. Um, though Browse had poured c cold water on the tail attributed to him, the FBI Portland's field office would not address whether or not FBI or undercover FBI agents are being used to address the refugees' occupiers who have invited ranchers' right supporters from across the country to join them. Due to the ongoing investigation, we cannot provide any comment at this time, said a statement from the Haney County Joint Information Center in response to any inquiry emailed to an FBI spokeswoman. 
Well, I mean, it would make sense if they were going to infiltrate them. But that would make sense why they don't do any, um, you know, attack on the, the facility if they are inside there. Because you wouldn't want to do is get somebody that's undercover in there injured. Well, you know, it's, uh, I don't, you know, I, under, I understand their plight about the land, but I don't think that that's, they're not going to win this, going this route. And it doesn't make them look good. Anytime you do a violent <laughs> protest, and I think that it's, the only thing I think is violent about it is uh, they broke into the facility to take it over. Uh, do I think that, uh, I don't believe in the, you know, the protesters in Ferguson when they burnt down buildings and stuff like that. I don't believe in the protesters in Philadelphia. Or in not Philadelphia, when Baltimore, when they um, attack places in Burnham. I, I don't have, I have nothing against a peaceful protest. If you want to stand there and protest and hold your signs and say everything and do everything, but the minute you start attacking people and you start burning things down, that's when you you become just as lawless as, as the person or that you're trying to do is protest for. You feel the individual who was shot in Ferguson and the one that was shot in Baltimore, or actually who died in Baltimore because of the the officers that transported him. So you're not doing any justice to that person by burning down... Uh, on O'Reilly's Auto Parts or a, a CVS Pharmacy or something like that, or a, you know, I, I don't understand that mentality or dilute it. You know, and nobody that I know of today has been arrested for any of the crimes that they did, looting any of those. So. But, uh, you know, since the president enacted his executive orders, Washington Post came out with this. Obama's gun control is not enough. Confiscation needed. This is, uh, I knew this was going to come out. This is, the, they start calling for confiscation. On January 13th. Two days ago, Washington Post observed the President Obama's executive gun control do not portend a substantial reduction in gun crime because they lack one key element, gun confiscation. According to the Washington Post, confiscation is likely the only policy that would dramatically reduce gun violence in the United States. They cite the possibility of delusionists with the executive actions Obama put forward in January 5th based on the fact that Obama admitted the actions might only have a modest impact at best. Washington Post quoted Obama speaking at the January 7th gun town hall saying, we're not going to eliminate gun violence, but we will lessen it. If we take that number from 30,000 to let's say 28,000, that's 2,000 families who don't have to go through what the families at Newtown of San Bernardino or Charleston went through. The Washington Post says Obama believes his policies can save thousands of lives a year, but acknowledges that gunshots would still kill ten thousands of Americans annually. The intense level of firearm violence is one that Obama and the other gun control advocates might be forced to tolerate unless they push measures for more invasive than background checks. It says the bottom line, it has been just over a week since Obama announced his executive gun control, and already Washington Post says that's not enough. More gun control is needed now, even in the universal background checks that Obama, Gabby Giffords, Senator Joe Manchin, Democrat West Virginia, and others have pushed for years are not enough. Another policy must be put in place. The Post says one policy that has worked in other countries is confiscation. They point out Australia's mandatory buyback scheme 
as examples of such policy. Obama and Hillary Clinton have pointed out both such a confis- uh, confis- conf- I gotta even pronounce that word right now. Confiscatory scheme at various times themselves. Jeez, won't even come out. Um, yes, but they don't count how much violent crime has rose in Australia. Violent crime rose like fifty three percent because they know nobody has a gun to defend themselves. You know, it, they think that everybody is going to hold hands and sing Kumbaya if you do is confiscate guns. That's not going to happen. It, it, it's proven. You look at all the gun confiscation that's gone over the years. All the countries that have gone and confiscated guns. And they went on and killed millions of of their citizens. I, I just, I don't understand how these people think that if you get rid of guns that you're going to do is solve the crime. It's not going to stop. People are going to find another way to kill them. Whether it be a knife or a ball bat or a crowbar, they don't care. You need to stop the mentality of it. it it's you're not going to change the way people are. You look at it, you, they talk about how New York, New Yorkers, they treat people like crap. And that's the way New Yorkers rights, you know, and they feel that they can treat people like crap. That's, you're not going to change that. All you're going to do is make honest people victims. And how are you going to sit there and look, how can you look that family in the face? You know, what kills me is, you know, you talk about Gabby Gifford, how she's anti-gun, and the circulating post, her and her husband, where she's at the gun range shooting shooting her handgun. I'm just like, what? If she's so anti-gun, what does she need a gun for? What she, you know? You know, it's easy for the president or Congress people to sit there and say, oh, I'm against guns, because you know why? They'll have people that'll protect them. They don't need one. The president doesn't need a gun. He's got more guns protecting him than anybody. If everywhere you went, they sealed all the manholes and took all the the mailboxes and and did everything, and went in and with dogs and bomb dogs before you went there, before you went to... uh, uh, Walgreens or or Walmart or wherever you went or some grocery store. If every time you went anywhere, it was already thoroughly checked for, and all the background and all the people was checked. And you went there with a motorcade, with the SUVs with, uh, you know they pop up out of the top of these things and they got Gatlin cannons in them. You know. I wouldn't worry worry about having a gun either. But I'm an ex police officer. I've seen the the ass of society. I've dealt with people the you know the the crap of life that that they treat people they don't care. There's people that'll sit there and there's a story. This is uh, I I do. Martial arts. I'm into martial arts, but I read this story about um, he was a. I don't know if he was completely blind or almost completely blind. He was in a wheelchair, and a guy tried to rob him on the street corner, and he had been taking martial arts, and he did a hand lock on this guy and defended himself. The guy tried to rob a guy in a wheelchair. I'm like, people. They have no self-respect for anybody. They do, there's no. There's some people out there that will kill you for a hundred bucks. You know, you think about it. It's a. Uh, it's a shame that. 
you know, it, it's it's a shame that people are the way they are. Um, but taking away guns from men is going to change their mentality. All it's going to make them understand the, the gun buyback programs, if you go to confiscations, the criminals aren't going to go turn them in. The criminals are going to just hide them. You look at over in Germany right now, they're going crazy to buy guns right now because all the the immigrants that are coming in, they're attacking their the women over there, and they're trying to do is protect themselves. You wait. We're going to let all these immigrants come into here from Syria and everything like that, and it's going to turn into a mess over here. And you're going to see all these people that are sitting there talking about gun confiscation, and they're going to be crapping their pants. You be the victim. Don't take the guns away from people that are legitimate, that are um, law-abiding gun owners. Take them away from criminal. Make it, a, make it a federal crime. We talk about this. I talk about this every week. Make it a federal crime. Make it, Put in so many years behind it. Stiffen the penalties. Don't just let them out on the street. But uh, apparently, said uh, a University of Nebraska, Omaha, university professor who used a December 28th Facebook tirade. This is her tirade. Says, F the law. And I'm not saying the, word, the words all the way up, but it says they abbreviated them. F the police. F the NRA. Was allowed to meet with President Obama after his January 13th speech in Omaha. The professor's name is Amanda Gailey. She's also director of the Nebraskans Against Gun Violence. Here is Gailey's Facebook rant in its entirety. It says, F the society that has allowed itself to become so saturated in guns that it's plausible a child might have to have one at a park. F the laws that allows a toy maker to make toy guns that look like real guns that allow a gun maker to make guns that look like toys. F the racists who think black children look like adults. F the legal and police system that allows grown white men to pose with sniper rifles on a university campus or in a grocery store and allow insurrectionists to gain guns on government agents with no consequences but sounds alarms when a black child is carrying a toy gun. F the police officers who misundertook or who undertook a job that carries an inherent risk but think any perceived threat to them whatsoever justifies instantaneous lethal force. F the police officers who pull up as close as possible to an alleged threat so as they can execute that person as quickly as possible without assessing the situation first. F prosecutors who become, who can indict a ham sandwich, but can't indict a cop who executed a child. And F the NRA for greasing the machine every effing day with the blood of America, uh, with uh, American children. That was the post that she put out. So she's telling F the police. She's calling them that they're executing kids. And President Obama meets with her. I I don't know how you can uh you can go and meet with this this girl. This lady after she sits there and goes out and does a rant and tirade like that. It's easy to judge the officer when they responded to that. Would it have been better if, if that officer would responded and he didn't do anything? And he gets there and this kid who uh, looks like he has a toy gun and he draws it and shoots and kills this officer because the officer second-guessed it, which is now what you want them to do. I would not want to put myself in that situation ever. I worked 13 years in law enforcement. I, I know what it's like to go to a situation where you have somebody armed. It's a scary time. 
your adrenaline's going 900 miles an hour when you when you're called to an armed situation. And it's easy to sit there, you know, a year from now and say, oh, the officer should have done this. The officer should have did that. It's hard to sit there and make a decision what's going at real time. It's like a football play. You look at these guys, these players in the NFL, and then you sit there and say, well, oh God, he should have done this. The guy was wide open. You may not have seen it. And there's things that happen in, um, in law enforcement that you wish you could do is take back and do over. Yes, I don't think toy guns should be made to look like real guns. And you look at that toy gun. It looked like a real gun. They have red tips on them for a reason. That red tip was removed. I used to have, when I was a kid, a BB gun that looked exactly like a forty-five, uh, a Colt 1911 45. And it was a, it was a BB slash pellet gun. Nowadays, that, that thing could end up getting you shot. So, do I think it was a sad situation? Yes. Any, any kid that dies for a situation like that. But I know a situation where a black officer, when I was in law enforcement, killed, um, I want to say he was Hispanic, and when I was uh, when I lived in San Antonio, and he had a pellet pellet rifle. Nowadays, they wouldn't even talk about that. They would never even hit the news. It barely hit the news. But yeah, a friend of mine sent out a Facebook post, um, you know, about the mayor of San Antonio, how she is. Uh, receives $430,000 in government subsidies because she has been buying up property and she gets it from the San Antonio Housing Authority. Well, that that tends to make it a conflict of interest when I think if you're the one, you know, buying up all that property and purposely and then forgets to do is um, annotate or, or uh, put her husband's income as a bells bondsman on her taxes. Hmm. Oh, yeah, just an overlook. So, why the president met with this lady, I have no idea. It's easy to sit there and second guess what these officers have done. I, you know, it's a sad situation. Anytime. Something happens like that. I don't care if the kid's black, white, Asian, Hispanic, Arab, any any time. Somebody dies in a situation like that. It's sad. It feels sad for the parents. I feel sad for the officer that actually did the shooting. That's the last thing you really want to do. I mean, I know some guys that I think that that um, kind of like Tackleberry, you know, want to want the gun play, but um, you know, you look at guys, you wonder how they. You know, I've I've had guys that I worked with that I'm going, my God, how'd you pass the psyche out? You know, you just. But I don't think I really know anybody that I've ever met anybody that wanted to just go out and kill somebody. Not that I know of. At least they never act like that around me. I mean, I've met people that, you know, they're not quite, <laughs> you think they're uh, half a bubble off plum or something like that. But, you know, I don't, I don't recall anybody that, you know, they just want to do harm to people. I know a lot of people that are in martial arts and, and I don't know any, I hardly know any, I wouldn't say, I'd say 99.9% .9 of them don't want to 
they don't want to use it. They want to do it. It's, it's, it's a lifestyle. I don't want to have to sit there and fight somebody. But it gives me the confidence to know that I can if somebody would attack me. Um, I would. I think it's a, almost a must for nowadays for kids as they're growing up, especially women. With If all these immigrants come over here, they need a way to protect themselves. Learn, take something to defend yourself. Uh, last week I had Lisa Haven from uh, Lisa Haven news.net uh, she was on and uh, she even mentioned it about taking some type of martial art to defend yourself you look at uh, you know with all this popular mixed martial arts you got Tim Kennedy uh, apparently the FBI has notified him that that he is a target for uh, ISIS. So uh, what we're going to do is take a quick break. We're going to talk about that when we get back. Uh, so stay tuned. Need a dose of raw reality radio? Listen in to Night Talk with Joe Rocks every Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern. Exclusively on Armed Radio Global. With audio replays on Spreaker and live feed video on Ustream.tv. Or call in live to Night Talk with Joe Rocks at 1 5401. Thursdays, 10 p.m. Eastern. Hey there, sexy. This is comedian Jenny Lavoie. You can catch me with the rest of the gang every Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern on Night Talk with Joe Ross, exclusively on Armed Radio Global. Mwah! Mom, can you bag me some cookies for school today? Finally. As a mother, I want to share about St. Julian's macaroons. I am concerned about my child's health, so I pack for his lunchbox, and after school, I give him St. Julian's macaroons as a healthy alternative to many of the store bought cookies. There are no preservatives and only 100 calories, and he really likes them. So find them in the freezer section at your local supermarket, or order online today at www.macaroons.com. Route 106 Motors is the home of fine pre-owned vehicles. Experience a no-pressure sale with a family-friendly atmosphere. Route 106 Motors has been practicing the same simple philosophy of low prices for over a decade, and it has brought us great success. Recently, while other dealers are closing their doors, Route 106 Motors is expanding. We are a wholesale dealer, and we own the property and pay cash for all the vehicles. This allows us to sell to the consumer for a lot less than the average dealership. We are a high-volume, small-profit dealer, and we pass the savings on to you. New changes have been made at Route 106 Motors. Stop by and check out our brand-new building. Route 106 Motors, located at 569 West Street. Check our website at Route106Motors.com and be sure to like us on Facebook to find out about all the latest deals and savings opportunities. Route106Motors.com Hey everyone, this is Monica Ursino. Be sure to check out my music on WARM, Boston Digital Dance Station. And you can catch me on Night Talk with Joe Rock Thursdays at 10 p.m. Eastern exclusively on Armed Radio Globe. Are you hangry? Know the signs. Uncontrollable yelling. Why aren't you egg rolls? Hallucination. Sushi. Pants discomfort. I hate you, pants. Hangry. It can happen to anyone. Fortunately, there's E24, the app that tells hunger to shut up. Egg rolls. Thanks, Snoop. E24. In my medical opinion, it's the best mother way to order food online, baby. Hey, everybody. Mike Allen here. You can hear me live every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on TuneIn Radio. Or you can visit my website at www.ontheairwithmikeallen.com for more show times, updates, and replays. So remember, every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, on the air with Mike Allen, right here on Armed Radio Global. 
Hey everybody, this is Paul and Jim. Join us on Pod Talk Radio, Thursday nights, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right after Night Talk with Joe Rocks, where we will be discussing subjects one doesn't say in polite society. We're rude and crude and unwavering our opinion. So please tune in to Armed Radio Global, home of the big guns. Boom! Boom. back uh it's hard to believe we've been an hour and 35 minutes into the show and i, I just time flies so uh, hard to believe i can rant for uh an hour and 35 minutes but um no we're talking we're going to talk about tim kennedy he was on alex jones well i'd love to have alex jones call in yeah alex call in 1-866-225-5401 yeah yeah so But Tim Kennedy, who uh, this uh, FBI says ISIS wants to kill this UFC fighter, uh, professional MMA fighter and special forces veteran. Uh, Tim Kennedy was on Alex Jones. He was talking about how um, that uh, ISIS has threatened his life and the state of Texas. And you know what he says? I don't care. He said these. He came out, and his words were: "He said these guys are punks. They do it to try to scare people." He says he's seen so many things that it just doesn't bother him. So uh, hopefully, he can protect himself. He says he's always armed, and I think he, by looking at him, he looks like he can handle himself. So you know, we wish him well, wish him safe. Um, yeah, I'd like. You know, uh, I'd like to see him try because I think he can take most of them out. Yeah. But, uh, no, uh, I wanted to talk about before we get some odd news. Uh, climate alarmists, uh, they are inventing a new excuse. It said climate alarmists have come up with a brilliant new excuse to explain why there are no global warming. For nearly 19 years. Turns out the satellite data is lying. And to prove it, they've come up with a glossy new video starring such entirely trustworthy, not all biased climate experts, Michael um, Mann and Kevin Trentberth and Ben Sander. All these paragon of scientific... uh, Heavily, heavily in the climate gate e- emails. Uh, the, so they come out with this video stating that, stating that the satellite data is inaccurate. Well, if they wanted to push this so big, don't you think they would have taken the satellite data and doctored it to make it look like they were, uh, like, you know, the ice caps were melting? If you look at it, and if you look at the video... Of the you know of the satellite data, the ice caps are actually getting bigger. Hmm, that doesn't make sense. You know they're talking about what the climate model should be, and it's not even close. So, do I think that the climate, uh, you know, uh, Global warming is hockey. Yeah, I do. I just don't, I don't think it makes as much sense. As, I think they're. Uh, I don't think we affect the planet as much as they think we do. But uh, I want to talk about <laughs> is uh, oh well. Let's see if I can find a story here. Oh oh, talking about the lottery. I was going to talk about that earlier, but. Uh, this, uh, he was a warehouse worker, one, a third of the 1.6, what it says, the $1.6 billion jackpot that ended up being uh, Nashville, Tennessee, AP, a uh, small town warehouse worker turned in one of three tickets splitting the world record 1.6 billion Powerball jackpot on Friday. 
and swiftly announced that he would take his money now, giving up hundreds of millions of dollars in the future. But John Robinson and his wife, Lisa, said they won't stop working and won't make any wild purchases. They'll pay off their mortgage and their daughter's student loans, but have no desire to move from their small, gray, one-story house in a luxurious compound somewhere. Uh, I have never wanted that in the past, and I don't want it now. Who works at a dermatologist's office. Uh, big houses are nice, her husband said, but you also got to clean them. Robinson said he reached out to his brother to help finding lawyers and financial planners before deciding to take the winnings in a single lump sum of nearly $328 million, rather than let the lottery invest the prize and pay him in annual installments totaling an estimated $533 million. Why pass up on certain income totaling $200 million? Uh, we're going to take the lump sum because we're not guaranteed tomorrow, Robinson said. We just want a little... A uh, little big piece of the pie, and we're real grateful we got a uh, a piece of the pie. Yep, that's nice. It says no one has produced the other winning ticket, which overcame the one in two hundred ninety two point two million to land all six numbers uh, at the public supermarket in Melbourne Beach, Florida, and and a seven eleven in Chino Hills, California. So somebody's going to do is you think that if your town was mentioned, you'd find out and hear it on the news where you bought these tickets, you know, the locations that are at. <laughs> so, yeah, I tell you what, that would be nice. I think I could do some real good with, the, with uh, a couple hundred million. It would uh, be a nice winter, <laughs> and it would go all the way into, into the spring. Yep. I think you can have a big party and still have a lot of money left over. So, um, But a lot of people make the mistake uh, when they do. Uh, this guy, this one guy, he said the mistake that nearly cost him a Powerball winner his jackpot a week after a West Virginia man won the largest jackpot in Powerball history, until this one, um, he says, I was at a party in South Carolina. My friend introduced me to a cute girl, worked at a TV station, and left us alone to talk. Uh, you work in TV, too? I nodded. Uh, you're from West Virginia, right? She said, yes. Things probably got crazy with the Powerball guy, right? They did. Do you work at the station that got the numbers wrong? I shrugged my shoulders. No use in denying it. She never... No, of course, that I was the one who screwed it up. You weren't the one who screwed it up, right? And he goes, I froze. I hesitated. I didn't answer right away, which was all it took to confirm that, yes, I was. Oh, my God. She interrupted my thoughts, now wide-eyed and covering her mouth with her hands. Uh, she couldn't think of anything else to say except for another round of, oh, my gods. In 2002, the only way to immediately know if you want a Powerball jackpot was to watch television. Since I was 22, I just started working the overnight shift at an NBC affiliate in Huntington, West Virginia. Part of my job was to put out the Powerball numbers on the air, 11 p.m. news. Even though the drawing was aired live on the competition station, a huge number of viewers would watch us for the numbers instead. A big draw in the viewing area where the people were largely old, poor, and computer illiterate. The lottery numbers would air on my station around 11, 13 p.m. or so. And had the potential of keeping sleepy viewers awake through at least the first commercial break. So every Wednesday I'd stop what I was doing at 10.59, watch the other station, jot down the numbers. They walked to my control room. If I forgot, I yelled at the next day, Powerball is huge. My old boss would say, gesturing with his open arms to emphasize just how huge it was. People watched for the numbers and you would... Uh, have them not letting them down. On Christmas night in 2002, the top prize had grown to a legendary portions of more than $314 million. At that time, was the largest Powerball jackpot ever. My boss decided that the numbers wouldn't air at 11.13, but rather at 11.05, five minutes after the drawing. Therefore, there'd be no walking. That night, as the balls came out of the machine, I scribbled on the number as quickly as I could, sprinted down the hallway, tossed a slip of paper to the production tech, 
who entered the numbers into the system just seconds ahead of time. Well, I must have mused as I gasped for breath, at least for the losers, would know how close they came. I walked back to the newsroom with a sigh of relief, made it. If I'd beaten the clock, my boss would yell at me. Uh, or So my boss wouldn't yell at me. As I heard, heard Anchor realize, uh, read the numbers, I realized I'd gotten one of them wrong. So here's something I didn't realize that moment. The faster I write, the more my sixes look like ones. Instead of 16 showing up the screen, the graphic showed 11. I turned and sprinted back to control. And the only thing going through my head was the word, you know what, <laughs> starts with an S, ends with a T, set on repeat. I flung the door open and everyone turned to look at me. I blurted out the only thing that came to my mind. After regaining my composure, I told them about my mistake. I stood there and watched the clock and misinformed the public only two minutes before the anchor apologized and read the correct numbers. At least we corrected my mistake quickly, I thought, and besides the chance of anyone winning were small, the likelihood the winner would be from our area even smaller. The odds of the person being a viewer that night at 11 p.m. newscast smaller still. I was the only one in the newsroom. The first Associated Press flash came shortly after midnight. There was one winner. The next flash, the winner was from West Virginia. The next one, the winner had bought a ticket at a gas station in the next county over. <laughs> so, yeah, you can actually make a big mistake and have a guy tear up a ticket because they read him wrong. I would always, if I was like one number off, you got to look at the tickets. I uh, I usually carry them in my wallet until I check about four or five at a time or whatever. So, uh, here's a nice funny st story. Um, man on store video wanted for fifteen hundred dollar chewing gum theft. Markham, Ontario. Canadian police are searching for a man accused of stealing over $1,500 worth of chewing gum from a local pharmacy. How do you steal $1,500 worth of gum? Uh, another story, Canadian chopper finds vodka bottles had been filled with water. This says in Toronto. Yeah, I would be a little pissed if I bought a bottle of liquor and it gets, ends up being water. Police and Liquor Control Board of Ontario are investigating the incident of deliberately tampering uh, conducted at LCBO store. Um, I don't know. All the stories that are coming out right now are, from these are um, authorities. Canadian man pulled 200 pounds of Xanax into Vermont on a sled. A Canadian man garbled him, uh, garbed himself in winter camouflage, tried to sneak into a Vermont while pulling a sled loaded with nearly 200 pounds of Xanax. Okay. Um, here's got the NFL playoffs going on this week. Who has the highest selling NFL jersey? Of course, it's no surprise. Not only was Tom Brady undefeated on the field, he was also held 20 and 11 record in October jersey sales. So, you're looking at, I'm trying to look at some of them. Uh, Beckham Jr. was in there a couple times, three, four times. This is every, they, they go day by day. Uh, Green's in there a couple times. Uh, trying to read. But no, Tom Brady, hands down, sold the most jerseys overall. Pretty, pretty. The new Mr. October, it says. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it's a New York man searching for police officer who drove him to job interview. A New York man is trying to identify a police officer who drove, gave him a successful 
a ride to a successful job interview to make good on a promise of lunch. That's pretty nice. Guy gets a ride, and it's probably a, a probably a good thing that they don't publicize who it is, because I guarantee it, if they publicized who it is, the PD would probably would probably suspend him or something for doing it. But uh, uh, James Roberts, fifty eight, was headed for a job interview for a position at LaGuardia Airport, a car rental company. Who is so excited they didn't realize until getting off the bus that the interview was actually at another location six miles away. It says, um, I was actually crying inside. I want this job. I got to be there at a certain time, Roberts told CBS New York. Uh, Roberts said the police officer notified or noticed he looked distressed and asked him what was wrong. He explained his situation to the officer. He said, you're not going to walk out there and make it and make it there. What time do you have to be there? He said, one o'clock. And it was like 12-something, he said, get in the car. Last thing he said to me was, good luck, God bless. I said, I owe you lunch, Robert said. Robert, who got the job, said he wants to make good on his promise. He doesn't know the officer's name. I say Andrews is his last name. For sure, his tag had an A and a D in it. I'm not, uh, not sure if the in- initials or what Robert said. Uh, but that's a pretty nice thing to do. That's to serve and protect. When you do stuff like that for people that need help. Um, this is, this would piss me off. California's nurse winning Powerball ticket revealed as prank by son. Uh, Pomona, California. A California nursing home erupted in celebration when a nurse won the Powerball lottery. But her Win turned out to be a prank perpetrated by her son. Boy, would I be pissed off. If you, if one of your family pulled out a fake ticket on you and you get all jacked up thinking you won, it ended up being a joke. So, that would be, that'd be a little tough to take. Uh, there was a, a video out here. It says, bears in India chase after food delivery truck. Agra, India. Animal rescuer in India captured video of a group of bears chasing after the food delivery truck. It looks like there's uh, eight of them. No thanks. Let's see here. We got um, anything other else to talk about before we uh, had some major losses in 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 stars this week. We had uh, David Bowie, of course, died at sixty nine, and then Alan Rickman. Uh, he played uh, Hans Gruber or Hans Gruber and and uh, Professor Snape's in. Harry Potter, and then also we had uh, oh, um, Gil- oh, he played Gilligan. He passed away. That was when I saw it today. So, yeah, I watched uh, Gilligan's Island. I, I think I've saw every episode probably ten times when I was a kid. Um. Yeah, you think about some of these people when they, you know, stars that you watched as a kid and you see them pass away at such a, you know, well, like 69, I consider it a young age. But um, one one more story I want to talk about before. I This one I came up, it was a mining awareness. Um, this is an article that came out. It says radioactive releases from the nuclear reactors of the Mississippi River watershed. What are the dangers? Oops. Oh, Bob Denver. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Um, But uh, it says, reactors from the Mississippi River watershed, what are the dangers? It doesn't take an accident. They they legally leak all the time. And it shows a a picture of all the 
reactors that are on that are you know somehow hooked to the Mississippi River. It says nuclear plant releases air, water, and soil. Typical discharge points for gaseous and liquid releases to air, water, and soil from nuclear power plants, including planned releases from reactors, routine operation, and unplanned releases from leaks and accidents. What are you not supposed to know? It doesn't take an accident for a nuclear power plant to release radioactivity into our air, water, and soil. All it takes is the plant's everyday routine operation and federal regulation permit these radioactive releases. Uh, what are the, you know, we have uh, uh, one of the nuclear power plants that lo- located here close to me, it's called Cordova. They have, uh, what the river will be iced over right there, that the water will be so much warmer. It's all heated up from the, the power plant. You know, that's kind of scary to think that, you know, everything else will be frozen over. We'll have ice jams in the winter, but not there. <laughs> uh, it says radio, ra- radioactivity is measured in Curie's, a large medical center with as many as a thousand laboratories in with which radioactive materials are used may have combined inventory of only about two Curie's. In, crast- in contrast, with an average operating nuclear power plant, which uh, have approximately 16 billion curies in its reactor core. This is equivalent to long-lived radioactivity of the least 1,000 Hiroshima bombs. A reactor fuel rods, pipes, tanks, and valves can leak. Mechanical failure in human error can also cause leaks. Look at uh, Japan. You can't even get near those leaked reactors. The risk of accident uh, leaks generally increase. The risk of accidents also increases. Some contaminated water is intentionally removed from the reactor vessel to reduce the amount of radioactivity and corrosive chemicals that damage valves and pipes. The water is filtered, then recycled back into the cooling system and released in the environment. A typical 1,000 megawatt pressurized water reactor with cooling tower takes in 20,000 gallons of river water or lake or ocean water per minute for cooling. Circulates it through a 50 mile maze of pipes, turns 5,000 gallons per minute to the same body of water and releases the remainder to the atmosphere as vapor. I uh, played some golf courses when I was down in Texas or uh, not Texas, I'm sorry, or um, Florida when we were down over the winter and it's right next to these cooling towers. You can see them. It's kind of freaky seeing them all, the discharge of the vapor. So, you know, it's always wondering how much they actually release into the water and what it does to our Mississippi River basin there. I live right on the Mississippi. So, not like I, I mean, not like I look out the door and I see the river. What I'm saying is, we live on a town, right, city right along the Mississippi. It's a huge river, uh, almost a mile, you know, in spots, it's a mile wide in spots. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know how much that contaminates the river. And, I mean, there's always dumping into that. So, you know, you think about you got to do is make sure that, you know, that, that water is taken care of because we have water treatment plants that are on the Mississippi. If they're treating water that's radioactive, you're not going to get that radioactive out of the water that you're going to, you know, go to pipes that go to houses. So at least I don't know how you would get rid of it, at least not through a normal uh, pumping station. So... Well, it's getting to be that time of the night. Um, oh, I did see this really cool looking. Oh, uh, before I get into that, I want to. Feds want to lower the legal limit to one. Legal limit to one drink. I don't know how you're going to be able to. to uh, you know what you're going to get that, or how you're going to get that that low. But I saw this. It was, this was another thing. It was a tech thing. Uh this came out of the independent uh, UK. 
it, it was a plane with a detachable cabin that to saves live during a plane crash. So if a, a, let's say a plane's going to crash, the cabin will detach and be on balloons or whatever or something like that that will uh, allow it to float back to the ground or float to where it can land on the water and be in you know and, and float on the water. I thought that was a great idea, you know, to where the it would have to the airplane design would be different, but at least you might have a way of saving some people's lives, you know, on a plane crash. You know, you look at uh, air travel. You know, you're you're more more apt to get killed in a car crash than you are in an airplane crash. But I think the longer you fly, the more you kind of mark off the that board. I would love to have anything make it you know safer. I just don't like uh, I just don't like going through the airport. You know the TSA line. My God, they treat you like crap. You know, I mean, it's just they go through everybody. They treat everybody like a criminal. They, you know, they. It's like, uh, you know, they they showed a girl that was uh, uh, like a twelve year old girl that was getting uh, frisk searched because she had uh, a juice box. You know. I, I don't I don't know I I just think that uh, you know it's common sense, but I mean heck when I was when I was first starting to fly, people smoked on the planes. They uh, you had to be in a certain rows to be able to smoke. I mean, you know, you could bring on just about anything. But they, they talk about how terrible they are about letting guns get onto the planes and stuff. You know, TSA misses so many things. So, you know, and then they stop this girl and frisk her because she has a ju- juice box. But they'll, some guy will get through, they'll smuggle guns through that are purposely there to try to get by the TSA, and they do it. So, I don't know. Well, we're going to call it a night. We're actually a couple minutes over. And uh, everybody, it's going to be cold this weekend here. It's supposed to be a high Sunday of minus two. A low, I think it's like minus eight. With, that's not even counting the wind chills. So that's a little chilly for me. Too cold for me. So everybody, have a great night. Be safe. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you on Monday. So... And like I always say, most of all, be safe.